The following is a presentation of TFNN. We're going to go to Tom in Colorado, who has been good enough to hold. Tom, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Good morning, Steve. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to hear your voice. Yeah, you are, Mr. Happy, I'll tell you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank hey, you. Steve, I, I've been listening to the station for over a few years now. Yes. And I'm a first-time caller to your show. And uh, I'll tell you, I love the way you break down the charts explain things, your patience with the callers, the way you articulate the Fibonacci's and what have you. I, I think you do a great job. You're a great addition to this uh, news network. Well, thank you very much. We really appreciate that. Really do. Yeah. I can change. Let's go to a Dave in Boston. Hey, Dave, what's happening? Hey, yeah, uh, real quick, Steve, I got to tell you, man, you saved me yesterday because I had covered my short positions when I saw that mini rally and then they tanked the market and I didn't know whether to reshort at the close and then when I got your video update, you totally gave me a game plan and boy, did it work out. Oh, that's uh, great. Kudos, that's great. kudos, man. Uh, you were right on that. Thank and, you, uh, thank you. And even after it came out last night, they reported that uh, they had failed and then the, the futures came down. That's right. And then they went up again. So, that's man, right. you were right on that. Let's go to our first caller. Let's go to Susan in Boca Raton. Susan, thanks for calling. I just have to say one thing. I just recently subscribed to your Mastering Probabilities. Oh, thank you. You have put so much time and effort in it, and it shows. It is now time for The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the September 25th wet and wonderful Wednesday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I absolutely treasure your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that is what it's all about. So let's go look at one of our tools. This is the tool I call, you can never solve a problem on the same level as the problem. You know, now, what I consider to be one of the best ways to solve a problem, I gave you uh, five steps yesterday. I'm not going to review those five steps, at least not right here, right at this moment. But one of the best ways to solve a problem is to lift yourself, is to lift your consciousness above the level where you actually met the problem. You see, problems, obstacles, they're just simply unanswered questions. And they're likely to just simply dominate our mental landscape out there. And they can cloud our judgment if what we're trying to do is to solve them on that exact same level. Now, let me give you an example. I've always enjoyed sporting events. Actually, I'm solving a problem right now as we speak. So I'm multitasking here. So this is so I'm having to take myself up above a level. But let me just describe to you. Know, I've, I've always loved sports out there. And, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I've had the experience of sitting in the uh, upper row especially in my early stages of life. And you can get up to such a height out there. In fact, I have been inside stadiums where you can peer out and look over the top. That's how high up you actually are. But when you go back and reflect upon that experience, what you can actually see, one of the benefits about being above the actual game, in this case here, being above the problem, is you can actually see the play unfold. You know, if you've ever experienced a football game from up high or a basketball game from up high, the Orlando Magic. In the uh, days when uh, Shaquille O'Neal and Penny Hardaway were, uh, were, were, were there, that seems like quite a while ago, 
I used to do some. I used to do a bunch of work for the uh, uh, for the Orlando Magic. Had a concession stand inside their facilities, and every now and then I would go up to one of the boxes. What was always amazing to me is the boxes were all the way up at the very top of the stadium. Now that stadium has since been uh, blown apart, and they've they've uh, reconfigured that. Uh, but when you're up at those boxes having a good time, and you were peering down at the uh, game, it looked like these little ants that were walking around there. But if you actually just step back for a moment, you could what you could actually take from that is you could see the play unfold. And it really works that way when you have a problem that comes into your life as well. What you need to be able to do is pick yourself up above that problem. You know, if you ever if you ever watch uh, professional golfers out there, they're going to visualize the shot, most of them, all of them actually, they're going to go through a routine. They're going to visualize the shot beforehand. It's almost like an outer body experience out there. And so what you can do is you can do the same thing. You need to do the same thing when you are trying to solve any kind of a problem out there. You know, this coming Friday uh, during the Master Trader Workshop, I'm going to, we're going to be taking a look at the charts. And the whole objective here is to be able to solve the problem of what is it that the market wants to do. And it's about being able to lift ourselves above the charts, take a look, always have a fresh start, always start with a fresh chart, uh, fresh chart and fresh start out there, and take a look at what the markets are doing, kind of like an out-of-body experience. So in any event, uh, that is, uh, that's what I suggest that you do. The problem I'm experiencing and today's show is going to be perhaps a little bit different. I have a data feed, but all I've got is the uh, pipe into my system so I can see my charts, but I can't see the actual numbers as far as what the market is doing. So it'll be an interesting open uh, call. Now, I've tried to pull up some other systems that I've got out here, but all this has taken place within about three or four minutes before coming on the air. So I'll try to make it as seamless as possible, but that also means that, uh, you know, what's great about this, right? I told you yesterday, I said that the best thing that you can do to solve any problem is always say first, that's after that's after it comes in and you say, oh, my gosh. I, now, that's not exactly the language that I use, but uh, uh, but I did then come back and say, well, what's great about this? So we're going to see if uh, if I can solve that problem as far as what's great about this. Name it. Let's go. Let's go take a look at the uh, markets out here. Then I'll show you what one of my solutions is to uh, that uh, is to that problem specifically. Let's go take a look here at the ES mini. If we take a look at the we're going to look at the daily chart here. Looks like it's trading out at about 1692.75. I think that's up maybe about uh, a quarter of a point, so we're looking at uh, something that is very flat out here. Now, if we take a look at the ES Mini, we have that nice little uh, gap up. This is the uh, Sunday gap, I believe, right? This is the uh, Sunday gap from uh, August, uh, September 13th to September 16th. So that's the uh, Larry Summers bounce out there. We can see that price has, in essence, come back and it has tested that area. Let's go ahead and draw a, a line across the uh, screen on a market. Let's actually draw a line across the screen so that we can see where there is some uh, support. And we can see that the first level of support is going to be the top of the gap. So in this case here, that would mean the low of the Sunday session, the Monday session as well. That would be at uh, 16, looks like about 1688 on my screen. Now, if we take a look at the uh, price of the last two trading sessions on uh, yesterday, you got down to 1687.50. We'll take a look at an intraday chart and see what that was all about, and uh, and it held. Now it didn't form a, a bullish reversal candle. If anything, it's a high wave candle. Now that high wave candle, uh, some people might call it a, a doji. <clears throat> what both those candles are really telling us is the market is lost its direction. Now that's what you want to see when it's coming into a, a support level out there. You want to see uh, if you are bullish, which right now I am uh, bullish out here. You want to see a market, especially with it having moved down. You want to see some type of signal that tells you that it's lost its direction out there. Now, today's candle is not done. What we can say about today is today has tested that low as well. So as long as that low holds, which is 1688, you can say that all the market has done is come back to a breakout area and test it, a breakout area with support, and that would be bullish out here. Now, if it can, it can get lower, it can most certainly get down and test the high, 1683.75. That would be the high of that uh, Friday session, close back above it. That, too, would be bullish. We've got two areas of support out there. Now, you would ask the question, what happens if support breaks? If support breaks, then the next level of support is where price will likely travel to. In the case of the ES Mini, that's most likely the rising price channel that it has been traveling in, or it's going to be a Fibonacci number. If we go take a look at the Fibonacci numbers from the uh, swing point low, this would be the uh, August 28th level up to the high that came in on uh, September 19th. You'll see that the uh, point, uh, 0.618 level is right about, it uh, looks like 1663 out there. So that is the uh, range, 1663. Maybe that blue uh, 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 rising price channel is where price would get to. That's going to require getting back into that uh, September uh, September 13th, Friday the 13th candle out there, which is at 1683.75. So close inside there. 
That says, okay, a game would be on. Now, it's actually a swing point, so the low of that swing point is 1674. But those are the stair steps. That's what it is that we are looking at inside the ES Mini out there. Let's go check in on uh, gold and uh, silver. You've got the uh, gold is up about five bucks right now, I believe. Let's go check out uh, Goldilocks out here, see what it is uh, doing. Now, there's its rising price channel, which is, has rejected. So, really, nothing going on here, just a sideways move. We know that uh, support inside. Uh, gold is going to be right down here at the uh, low of a twelve ninety one fifty. So just a sideways day there. Yes, you had a little doji ish uh, style candle yesterday. So has it lost its way on the uh, way down, or is it a halfway marker? on the uh, way down there like uh, Rick in British Columbia used to or still does I'm sure uh, use all of the uh, time out there well it all depends on what price does here today but we know that we've got some pretty decent support here at the uh, low of uh, September 18th and if you get a close blow 1291.50 out there that's what's going to set up a, a run all the way down probably to the 1233-ish uh, range that's going to be the swing point uh, 1234.80 is the actual swing point high from June 28th and that's what would uh, likely take place in Goldilocks if we take a look at Silver out here. Uh, silver right now is trading out at about 21.76. So that makes it up what uh, maybe about 17, 18 cents. So just a sideways day inside silver as well. It's got a, uh, a very important support level, which is also a, a bullish engulfing uh, candle. That is from September 18th as well. So 21.22 is that area that you don't want to see cracked if you are long on silver. In the case of light sweet crude, it has pulled all the way back. Take a look at this. This is a beautiful pattern out here. It has pulled all the way back to a, a trend line. That's the trend line coming off of the uh, low inside light sweet crude coming into the April 18th swing point. Uh, that low out there was 85.61. Your next touch point out here is going to be that, that little bullish engulfing candle from June 24th. That low at 92.67. We can see that also we've got uh, prices come back into the bottom of that consolidation range. So this is the area where light sweet crude should fish or cut bait as they say, and if it decides to go fishing, it's going to go fishing for a higher price. That'll go ahead and take it back to the top of the consolidation range. That's going to be in that 109-ish level. And if it's going to cut bait, then it's going to break the trend line. It's going to move lower. That move lower would send it down to about seven bucks below where it's trading at. So 103 minus uh, seven bucks. What does that get us to? About 97 or so. Now 97 is going to uh, take us right back into the uh, longer consolidation area. So it should find some support at the top of that level, and that's right around the uh, hundred dollar mark. 99 dollars, I would say, is probably a good uh, level for it to test. So we'll see. Well, we, you know, this is this is important support, and we should get a pretty decent signal here with regard to uh, light sweet crude uh, today. I would say today or tomorrow out there. If we take a quick peek here at natural gas, let's go see what it is uh, doing out here. Natural gas having broken the point three eight two retracement as well as a swing point. The swing point that it broke was on September 6th. That says that light sweet crude ought to make its way back in that point six eight retracement area. We had, I think it was maybe Lou from Nashville yesterday. He was taking a look at a possible trade on natural gas. We said just be patient out there. We're going to need a little bit more patience today as well. We'll see if it can move down to about the three, what is it, about 339-ish level. So we get back. I'm going to go to game plan B out there, and we'll see how you like game plan B. We'll be right back, folks. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. What the launch of Tiger TV. 
WTFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 50 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so I told you I had a, a little technical like glitch here this morning just before I was coming on the air, and uh, you know just to prove that I uh, I don't just uh, that I do what I say, I say what I do. I don't just uh, I don't ask you to do anything that I wouldn't do. And so you know there are circumstances that are going to be thrown at you. I promise you, especially if you do a live show, there are circumstances that can be thrown at you. Yesterday I talked about the five different uh, questions because questions really are the answer out there. So you should write these things down. You should put them certainly in your powerful. Uh, memo pad inside your your maybe your pad device or your phone device or what have you. Those five questions, real quickly. Always after that uh, that set of circumstances get tossed at you is what's great about this because it's always going to be great. You can need to find something uh, great there. Now the key is you always need to be able to do this from a great state. So when something gets tossed at you that isn't so great, the very first thing you got to do is you got to change your physiology. So as soon as I realized it was a problem, you know I got up for a second, you know got my shoulders back and, and came from a, a sense of a strength out there. You want to make sure that you're doing that. Then, uh, you know, you've got to ask what's not perfect yet. Uh, that's, that's a second question because that presumes that uh, you can create perfection. I'm going to uh, do that. Uh, then you've got to, you know, ask that question, you know, what are you willing to do to make it the way that you want it out there? Uh, so I was scrambling pretty quickly. You've got to ask, you know, what are you willing not to do? Where I was focused on is what's great about this number five. What I was focused on, that question that you've got to ask yourself is how can I enjoy the process? Well, 
You know, and actually, there was an email that I got from uh, uh, from one of the folks that signed up for the uh, Master Trader uh, course. And, uh, uh, and thanks thanks so much for, for all the folks that have signed up. It's going to be a great event out there. If you did miss the uh, deadline to get $200 off, well, that's okay. You can still get into the class. That extra $200 is going to be well worth it. All the details still on the homepage of TFNN.com. And the question was, when I'm trading, because when I am doing the show here, you're only really seeing one of my screens out here. You're actually not seeing, you're seeing one. Because I use different tools. You should have different tools as well. Actually, I actually have three different uh, charting, well, four different charting applications that I uh, use. Now, two that I use uh, predominantly and primarily. So one of them I've got up on my screen, and this question was, you know, as I'm trading, this is the ES Mini, this is the futures. I love trading the ES Mini out there. I think all of you know that. And so what does my screens actually look like? So that's the uh, great that's going to come about this because how can I enjoy the process? Well, I can enjoy the process by sharing with you exactly what it is that I do. So you can see four different quadrants if you're watching this on Tiger TV. If you're not, uh, you can always get the, uh, you can get the archive of this uh, show as uh, well. And uh, if we take a look at the chart here, I've got the ES Mini now, which in the upper left-hand corner, I've got strategies. These are some strategies that I'm going to be sharing during the uh, workshop on uh, Friday with the exact parameters that need to be used. The upper left-hand corner is the strategy that I use, what I'm looking for, in order to be able to go short the ES Mini. That's in the upper left-hand corner. In the upper right-hand corner is the strategy that I use when I'm going long the ES Mini. Now, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner, it's on a 58-minute chart out there. Hmm, something to think about. And the right-hand side, it's a 48-minute chart that I'm using for my trading strategy. Now, in the bottom right happens to be the daily chart of the ES Mini. Down below that is that uh, little tool that I, I shared with you, I think a couple of, uh, maybe last week or what have you. It's really great to help you understand. It's a great trend indicator tool. It's a combination of a number of different things out here. So I want to understand on the daily chart where I'm up against the support, resistance, and so forth. You can see that the uh, three candle formation that was uh, formed here on the uh, trail. Let me see. I think, give me the. Uh, let me put the uh, cursor out here. Uh, that's on the trading sessions of what uh, September 18th the uh, 19th and the uh, 20th, we did get down. So as of Friday, we got a little uh, reversal uh, signal out there. That was a bearish uh, reversal signal. Now, on the lower left is uh, yesterday when we were when I was on the air, I said, hey, we got a reversal signal here as the uh, ES Mini had pushed lower. Actually formed a little hammer candle out there. Now, this is the same pattern that, quite frankly, picked out the, uh, oh, geez, I didn't mean to do that. The heck did I do there? Okay, there we go. So I'll try to do that. So here is the actual high. Uh, then I did go short. You guys know I went short because it was on uh, Thursday. It was the day after Uncle Ben Bernanke uh, was out there. Now, this is intraday trading inside the market. So I got the uh, signal. I'll be sharing that. Same as yesterday, coming in here at that hammer candle, we got the uh, signal to go ahead and take a long position. So right now, I'm long. Look, I have no idea whether the trade will work out, but this is one of the uh, tools that I use just this one on this one chart right here, one of the tools that I use when I'm trading. And then I'm able to go back and take a look at my short signal, see if I'm if if that is still in a short position or if it's neutral, which yesterday, as I was taking a long trade here in the ES Mini, it was neutral. It did not have a, a short signal on it, utilizing the trading strategy that I have. And in fact it was a little bit later in the uh, trading session where on another long signal that I got it was long. Now, I have no idea whether the trade is going to work out. This is nothing more than a game of money management and risk probability out there. And you take the trades when they set up. Anyways, I thought I would share all that with you. Now, we got to figure out how to get through the next hour and a half. We'll do that by going out to maybe Victor if he's still on the line. We'll be right back, folks. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're off to the races. We got the Dow. Up four points. S&P is uh, flat. Composite is uh, flat as well. Russell 2000, that is a horse that just will not die out there. It's up a, a buck right now. Uh, that is about as all as I can uh, give you at this uh, stage out here. So an abbreviated open, although it looks like, let's see, the upside here, you got Rio Tinto, BHP. Uh, they're up uh, respectively about 27 to 84 cents out there. So it's about three. And, uh, and then the other is up uh, 1% out here. Um, let's see, uh, to the downside, all I've got is a couple of symbols, and I don't recognize the actual names that, that go with it. So uh, in any event out here, so, you know, just to go back to this here real quickly. So I've got four screens, four different charts that I'm uh, taking a look at when I am uh, trading in order to be able to put on either short or long trades intraday out here. I'm not suggesting that you be a day trader. I am suggesting that you do pay attention to what goes on inside the uh, futures market because it's going to help you to understand what price patterns uh, have completed inside the uh, market. And it'll help you if you trade the if you trade the singles, the doubles, the triples out there. You want to make sure that you're familiar with the uh, price patterns inside the uh, marketplace. So 
Oh, that's interesting. I get a, another error, error right here. So this is going to be very, very cool hour and a, a half. Uh, let me go uh, put, I'm going to go put up my uh, other chart package out here. So let's go back over to uh, Ensign for the, there we go, came back on the screen. Had a request to go take a look at a uh, equity inside the uh, den. Feel free to, uh, uh, because I've got uh, low visibility in this uh, market out here. So feel free to uh, punch in anything that you want me to take a look at. It's going to be easier for me just to go to the chart. So uh, it's an easy way to get by here. I think the equity here was FNF. So let me, uh, let me just... Uh, Close out these uh, workspaces here. FNF is, uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, let's go see what the stock chart is doing. Does it really matter? No, we're just looking at the uh, stock chart. So FNF is the uh, ticker symbol. Right now trading out at $26.18. Let's go see what uh, this is uh, doing out here. Let's take a look at the uh, patterns. This thing had a high volume day, so that first, uh, you know, very first place where my uh, mind goes to on any kind of chart when I open it up is where it's to the uh, volume bar. You want to see is it a volume downdraft? Is it, you know, what what is the uh, volume bar represent out here? Well, in the case of uh, this equity, you know, it was a move off of a uh, swing point low from uh, May 22nd out there, and it was with some volume, uh, volume about 12 and a half million shares. So right now it's trading inside that uh, swing, it's not, it's not actually a swing point, but it's trading inside that high volume bar. It's making an attempt to get up and test the swing point high, which is from May 28th. Now that swing point high out there has got volume of 6.7 million shares. Let's draw a line across the bottom of the uh, of that swing point so that we can see clearly where price is at. And what we're going to gauge here is how did it enter that area? Did it enter it with volume? And what I'm all going to also do is come down to the uh, bottom of the screen and I'm going to go ahead and draw a line across. That makes it very visual, very easy. So what we can see here is this equity has gotten up into the uh, swing point and it's doing it with lighter volume. Now, when you get inside a swing point, doesn't matter whether it's with lighter volume or heavier volume. In this case here, if you close inside it, it says it can go up and test the high. I suspect that's what it wants to do, is get up into the $27.17 mark. Now, let's also take a look at a potentially to be equal CD up on this. The B point off of and so the low that we're going to use out here is going to be June 24th. So this is, uh, you know, in sync with the uh, market out there. So the, that leg from June 24th makes a run up to a high on August 6th, price point of 2540 uh, out there. So let's go ahead, we'll go ahead and use, we'll use red on this one just to differentiate the uh, lines out there. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to come back down to the uh, bottom of the uh, chart. We're going to take a look at that volume bar. Now we're going to see, did the did the B point of the A to B equal CD up, did it get crossed with volume out here? And how about wide price spread? Well, it most certainly did. That was on the trading session of September the 17th. So you're into a swing point, swing point high with lighter volume. It's going to need some juice to get up over it. And you have I confirmed A to B equals C to F. Now, I haven't looked to the left-hand side of the chart. We'll deal with the left-hand side of the chart in a, a moment. But let's go draw the A to B equals C D. The A point gonna be, is going to be the June 24th low. That's out at uh, 2199. Your B point is going to be that uh, swing from August 6th. Your C point down here is on August the 30th. So the one-to-one, -one, A to B equals C D, Guess where that takes you? To $27.06. Well, the high of that swing point at May 28th, which we believe that it'll go test since it's traded inside there, is at $27.17. So you've got a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD that's going to go ahead, which is confirmed, that's going to go ahead and complete at the top of a swing point where it doesn't have enough volume to take it out. So it looks like we've got now a double confirmation, if you will, that price wants to get up into that 22, I'm sorry, 20, uh, 20, uh, 27, 17-ish range out there. Now, if in fact it can take out 2717 and do a six point more than 6.7 million shares, then the next level for this to move up to is going to be about 2796. So let's take a look because the question was, could this thing make a butterfly? Well, of course it can do anything that it wants to do. Let's take a look at what that butterfly pattern would then look like. So now we're going to go from the swing point that we've been dealing with, May 28th, all the way down to the low that came in on June 24th, your 1.272 level well, that takes you up to 2858. Uh, so that means this will do more than a 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD, which is doable. But first, in order for that to occur, well, let's, let's put it like this. For in order for that pattern to occur, you want to see it get above the uh, level of six, of uh, 2717 with more than 6.7 million shares. That's if you want to be long in this equity here from a short standpoint. And unless I like the short stocks that are 28 bucks, but you know, if you were going to go ahead and take a look at that, 
you could get a tiger butterfly if it got up over 27.17 on lighter volume and went ahead and completed the pattern up in that 28.50-ish range, 27.96 type uh, range inside the marketplace. So that is on FNF out there. That's on the uh, daily chart for FNF. If we just pull this back just a, a tad farther, put this on a, a weekly chart out here, uh, you can see that uh, this also may want to go ahead and move up into about the 28.62 level. And that would be a, a test of the actual swing point high from June of 2007. So let me go back real quickly here. That's the $28 range. What was the daily chart? And where did that take us to on that uh, butterfly? So a test of those highs. So there you get a butterfly doing a, a test of its all-time swing point high out there. Then if it does that pattern, it does not lighter volume, then you might have a couple of different sell signals. So that is on FNF. And I apologize because I don't know what the name of that equity is out there. Well, let's go to uh, Victor in uh, Paramus, New Jersey. Victor, how are you doing today? Good. I'm looking for RIG. It seems like it's going to fill the gap from uh, January that's out there. RIG. So we're taking a look at... RIG. Yeah, we're taking a look at uh, RIG. Hey, and yeah. When you look at that, do you think that's how the whole market's going to go? Because SPY has a gap from that date, too, you know, SPY. Yeah. I think that what the market wants to do, it first wants to at least go higher and test the, at, at a minimum, the S&P 500 wants to go test last Wednesday's high, so the Ben Bernanke yeah. day, because it's a high, it's a high volume high out there, and that that's what it wants to, uh, that's what that wants to do. In the in the case of the, the gaps got to get closed, don't they? Like SPY from December thirty first when it just jumped up. Um, well, maybe eventually. I uh, you know I, I what I would do I, what I would do better. is what I would do what I would do Victor is. Uh, you know, I wouldn't focus so much just on the uh, gap. I would be paying more attention to, you know, what's the price pattern? What's the price yeah, pattern that's probably. unfolding? And then, you know, are there any gaps near, nearby? doesn't mean that you shouldn't be cognizant of them. But well, I would... Look at RIG then. RIG is a perfect example of a gap can't be closed. Uh, it is. And tell me where you think it's going to go. Well, now, what RIG also did, almost created a, a three-drive to a, a bottom uh, pattern out here. We'll take a look at it. What it did yesterday gave you a nice bullish candle, gave you a nice little hammer candle out here. It was also, uh, what it was doing was making a 1.272 uh, expansion of its uh, set of swing points, which, uh, Victor, were from the September 3rd low, 45.10, up to the high that came in at on uh, September the 12th at 47.72. So it made a nice expansion. You got a nice hammer candle. If you were going to take a long position on this uh, right. trade, you would have a stop with a close below 44.40 out here. Now, it's truly been in a, a downtrend. There's no question about that. So you're going to want to see this equity here, you know, break that, that downtrend. You can just use uh, probably a line just like like I put up there as your first downtrend. I would use the high of the, if you're, in the, if you're going to take this trade, May 17th high. And then I just use as the next touch point here, uh, September 12th. So you oh, want to see it. You want to see. So if you do take a long trade, you want to see it get above that area. You don't mind if it comes back and tests it and rejects it. But if it runs into that and it stops, uh, then the actual trend, which is your friend, is still in place here. But you did get a nice Check reversal signal. What's that? Check out Intel if you get a chance to. What are you making of that? Intel. So if we put up uh, Intel, let me go over to a, a different... Uh, uh, chart out here, so that's on, that's on. I want to take a look at rig here too, as well, because you know you, what this also did, uh, just not to overlook it. This thing had a, a real nice breakout on the session of January third, and that was with uh, 12 million shares. Now the bottom, of the swing point, which is January second. I don't know, we might have lost uh, Victor there, but we'll take a look at the rig here. So let's take a look at this, just in case we uh, un uh, unhitched a little nougat out here from uh, courtesy of Victor. So if you take a look at the January second swing point, the top of which is, let's just use a line tool. So I'm going to get rid of the, uh, of the uh, uh, Fibonacci expansion and contraction aspects. Now let's just take a look at a little bit cleaner chart. We're going to go back to the swing point low. Let's put a uh, line across. Let's go ahead and make a nice, so you can see where we tested that swing point low, and you came back on light volume. Now, ideally, you'd come back into that swing point since it is a swing point on light volume, and that it didn't do yesterday. The volume coming in there was 4.9 million shares versus the swing point, which has 2.5 million shares. But, you know, you're really going against the uh, gap up. You're really going against that or that, that uh, the, uh, the, the wide price spread and accelerated volume off of the uh, bottom. So, you're in essence, you're really going against about 12.5 million shares out there. And you had a nice little reversal hammer candle. This looks like a hammer candle from where I'm at right now. 
uh, it looks like a hammer versus a, a doji. So you're getting a nice little, uh, a nice little, so a, a move higher to this could be a, a nice trade. Now, another way to uh, trade this is to wait to see if it can break that, that trend line. You pay higher price out there, but wouldn't you like to know that the uh, trend, which is your friend, is uh, shifted on here? Let me see if I can get another uh, possible indication of that possibly taking place out there. I don't like to use the word pot. And so today, if you get a, a close above uh, 4508, there's a secondary tool that I use that would say that the trend has uh, changed. Now, remember, you always want to be buying. You'd like to be able, ultimately be buying equities when on the relative strength indicator, it's down towards its uh, lows, which is in that 30-ish threshold level. So uh, in this case here, yesterday it got down into the... Uh, 35, 36 level. So uh, that is on a rig. So not a, a bad looking uh, setup there with regard to its uh, chart patterns. Uh, just came into that swing point a little bit too hot, but we'll go ahead and give some uh, credit to that nice wide price spread and breakout that it had out there. And what we will uh, do is uh, just use, uh, if you were going to take this trade, you would just simply have a stop below 4440. So that was on a rig, R I G. Uh, let me go take a look here at uh, Intel. Let's go into the uh, core earnings. That's our core core charts out here. See what we've got going on. Uh, here's IBM. Let's take a quick peek at IBM since that uh, bounced up uh, first. IBM trading down a little bit this morning. Looks like about 189-ish uh, level out here. Uh, as far as uh, yesterday's uh, move, just a sideways move out there on 3 million shares, so not a big deal out here. Uh, it is running into this little up thrust day from September the 11th out there that had 4.9 million shares. So it's been backing off with some uh, light volume. So far today, about 237,000 shares. So nothing uh, big, nothing huge out there. Neither overbought nor oversold. So IBM certainly can run in either direction out here. Of course, what we'd like to see it do is really come all the way back down to that consolidation level one more time and that's in the 182 uh, level. And if it can come back there on light volume, that becomes a, a nice long trade inside IBM. Likewise, if it breaks through there, especially with IBM being the number one waiting inside the uh, Dow, we know the Dow has been struggling here. It's with inside IBM that we should see it then break that consolidation. And I would say IBM would want to head down to the $150 level out there. And that's where, so from the longer term standpoint, with IBM being the number one waiting inside the uh, Dow, ton of information from paying attention to this stock chart out here. So it's a nice buy potential. And then if it uh, proves itself to not be a buy, and you would uh, jump to the uh, short side out there, that'll also probably give us a pretty good indication of more intermediate term, what the uh, market actually wants to uh, do out there. So that's a, a great barometer, in my opinion, for us to be paying attention to. If we take a look at Intel, see what Intel is uh, doing here today. Put that up on the screen. It's trading out at about $23.67 out here. And uh, Intel just simply running into resistance, uh, not, not necessarily today. We can see that the resistance level has been established by its gap down that took place between the trading session of July 17th and the uh, July 18th level. The low of July 17th is what is proving to be a resistance out there, and that is at a level of $24.04. It's only been tested uh, once out here. All that it's doing right now is just really traveling sideways. So as it tested the resistance area, it got into that uh, overbought condition. So I actually like the way that this is trading sideways in order to work off that, uh, work off that condition. Uh, that is actually more bullish sign than uh, bearish. And if, in fact, it can get above that level and you can get above the price point of $24.08 and do it with more than $28 million, $28 million, yeah, well, how about 28 million shares out there, you would actually have a confirmed A to B equals CD up inside of uh, Intel. So even though it's up into the resistance area, the question is, hmm, what is it doing now? And it's just working off a little of that big Buddha belly that it's got because it was too full, because it was too overbought. Hey, made it through the long segment with Plan B and Plan C. We'll be right back, folks. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain 
explain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning, by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.6% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. And all six of those winning trades had been initiated no earlier than just the previous month. With the 600th weekly gold report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began, and right now you can get a 30-day free trial to the gold report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market provides trading opportunities after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. The Dow is off uh, about eight points, I believe. The uh, S&P is down uh, maybe about a point and a half or so. <laughs> Composite is down five. I'm doing the uh, best I can here with my, my hands are tied behind my back. Hey, let's go take a look at the uh, Euro-Japanese uh, yen out here. I want to apologize to uh, my uh, clients, my subscribers. I, I put an incorrect chart in the uh, newsletter this morning. I was trying to put the Euro-Japanese yen in the uh, chart. It was an intraday chart. It's a 30-minute chart, so I'm, I'm going to do it live here. And instead, it was the U.S. dollar Japanese yen. So we'll, we'll take a look at both of those charts out there. And then a, uh, a subscriber, well, I got the newsletter out by about 7.15 or so this morning. That means I've been up uh, uh, pretty early. And uh, uh, and she was good enough to let me know that I that I made that mistake in a very kind way. And I responded and I answered another one of the questions that she had. And then I attached a, a chart, thinking that I attached the correct chart. I just realized I actually attached the wrong chart. 
So uh, maybe a little bit too much multitasking this morning. I just, all I can do is just smile. In any event, we got the daily chart here for the Euro-Japanese yen. We, we do want to be paying attention to this chart for sure because this is a, a great way to understand, you know, the markets and where we're at and what's going on. You know, yesterday we had net advancing issues, not net declining issues. I don't have the number in front of me today, but you need net declining issues of more than 1,000. I just can't recall what the exact number is out there in order for the bears to actually take control of the marketplace. So kind of an interesting uh, day out there. The uh, New York Stock Exchange was uh, was confirming that it was, you know, plenty fine, that it was uh, healthy out there, unlike the uh, Dow. So we do want to pay attention to the Euro-Japanese yen. It hasn't broken down. It's just simply doing what it should do after getting into an overbought condition on the uh, daily chart and traveling with inside that wide ranging uh, price bar out here. So nothing uh, bearish with regard to that candle configuration, just working off a, a full tummy out there. Now, if we take a look at the intraday chart here, this is the chart I intended on uh, sending out uh, to my uh, clients out here this morning. This is the intraday chart, the 30-minute uh, chart, so kind of it's EKG as to uh, what's going on inside the uh, market. Now, in order for the market to actually bust out and move higher, at least go back and test the high from uh, last uh, Wednesday, from Uncle, a week ago today, uh, what it, we're going to need to see here is we're going to need to see the Euro Japanese yen bust out of this little declining price channel that it has been traveling in, uh, the top of which was uh, on August, uh, September the 19th out there. Uh, the uh, price high coming in at about uh, buck thirty four and ninety three cents out here, so we can see a very defined uh, price channel. You can see that uh, price last time that was up here was during the trading session at four o 'clock in the morning yesterday september the twenty fourth Price of course also got to wear inside that price channel inside the relative strength indicator up towards the over uh, bought uh, condition. What did it do? Bounced right down to the bottom of the uh, price channel. So neither overbought nor oversold. We're seeing that right now in this 30-minute uh, session, it has more of a upward uh, uh, trend. And so we should see, you can see prices moved into the 200 uh, period exponential moving average. It's a 30-minute chart. So it's just looking at 230-minute bars on the way back. You can see price has moved into that little resistance area. Worked as resistance coming back and taking a look at the time frame about 1.30 in the afternoon yesterday. No, 1.30, yeah, 1.30 in the afternoon yesterday. If it can bust through that, the key is going to be can it bust through the rising price channel. So if you're short the market, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're paying attention to this currency pair. Because, and this is a directional, it's not like a tick for tick type of a uh, thing. It's a great directional indicator. But if you see this thing, break the rising price channel, come back and test the top of it, reject it, maybe do it a couple of times out there, that tells you the Euro Japanese yen wants to go to higher price, which is in fact what the daily chart is telling us that it wants to do out there. And that will go ahead and lift boats higher. That'll lift the tide out there. Folks, thanks so much for being here. If you're off to start your day, have a, a wonderful Wednesday. Otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you in just a few minutes. Take care, folks. Questions are the answer. You want a better life? Ask a better question. My driving force in life is how can I become the intelligence behind financial freedom? It's why I take massive action. It's why I've invested over 10,000 hours and thousands of dollars to create the answer, the ultimate money machine. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, and on Friday, September 27th, I'll be hosting a one-day online master trader course, The Ultimate Money Machine, where I'll teach you the exact same trading strategies that I use every day when trading the markets and advising my newsletter subscribers. Learn how to precisely identify the market's next move, when to pull the trigger by letting the market commit to you before you commit to it, and how to manage your trade to maximize your results, just as we did in the month of August, when I advised my newsletter subscribers of 11 new trades, resulting in one loss and a combined profit of 120 29%. Our next move, it's days away. The cost of this course, $595, less than $2.50 per trading session over the next year. If you're looking for the answer, it's the ultimate money machine. All the details on the front page of TFNN.com.